Hi, everybody. Welcome to day two of 10 days of self-care. And I had such a great response from you yesterday. I'm so happy that so many of you resonated. I got so many emails and messages just about how much this is hitting home. And I'm so happy. It makes me feel so good to know that I'm in tune with what you guys are craving um, and desiring uh, to know about and how I can help. So today is all about cultivating. Okay, cultivating your life so you can bloom. Okay, and I want you to think about this in terms of a plant. Now, I will be the first to say that I do not have a green thumb. I actually have like a black thumb, and um, uh, any sort of plant that I'm given really doesn't survive very long. I tried, but it's just not in, in me to do that. But that's okay. Um, I'm very nurturing in other ways with other with people <laughs> I'm a cultivator of people plants but um, anyways think of a plant right and a plant uh, needs a certain kind of environment to bloom okay to thrive in and that environment requires you know certain type of soil it requires good nutrients it requires water requires light it requires like the right kind of environment and when it has that environment it naturally blooms but if it is not given those things and isn't cultivated properly it does not bloom it does not thrive it suffers and i want you to understand that when you are well taken care of in this way uh, by cultivating a life that allows you to thrive you will naturally bloom now there are some things that can get in the way of our ability to be able to cultivate right and some of those things are um, emotional trauma and things that we have in the way from making those good choices that i talked about yesterday so I need you to understand that nourishing your life starts with in here, okay, a, a desire to do so, a belief that you're worth that. Um, but I need you to understand that a woman in survival mode shows up differently than a woman who is thriving and blooming, okay? So a woman in survival mode is going to look insecure. She's going to look afraid. She's going to be inauthentic. She's going to be about performing and desperation and trying to please everyone else around her. And she, um, you know, if you're desperate for water and for nutrients, you're going to be willing to get it whatever way you can, right, versus somebody who is thriving and feeling healthy, they're more choosy about where they're getting this from. So I need you to understand too that addiction, emotional eating, is uh, one of the things that I deal with a lot with, with clients, but there can be other addictions too. This comes from unmet needs and unresolved trauma that is manifesting itself in addiction, okay? Un unresolved trauma and pain that's inside here. And basically, we're addicted to something outside of ourselves to try to meet all of this soul craving and this pain that we feel inside of ourselves. And there are physical components to emotional eating, okay? So there can be things like bacteria that are calling the shots for you to crave certain things and, um, you know, depending on your brain and all that stuff that we work with on a, on a practical level when I take my clients through testing and find out physically what's up. But most of them have inner work to do on trauma and pain that they're holding inside their body that's manifesting itself in this emotional eating. I can tell you the more that I did my inner work to transform, the less that these outside things became necessary to try to uh, help me, okay, or satisfy me. So um, I need you to think about daily cultivating your world, okay, and some of that is the physical choices of the nutrients, literally, that you're putting in your body, um, you know, movement, uh, giving yourself a good community of women around you to help you, friends, support ne networks, uh, inner work, all that stuff. Um, and start to think about what do I need to cultivate now you need to understand that this is your responsibility okay it's your responsibility to cultivate your, your life to create a life that you love and what happens is women sometimes you know we're good at doing this maybe when we're alone but uh, once we become in relationship or we become wives or we become mothers all of that gets put on the back burner and we become obsessed with controlling the people who are in our lives, right? Whether that's, uh, you know, our significant others, the men in our life, we become very controlling over them, what's going on with them. It's much easier 
to be consumed with someone else than it is to look at your own life. And children as well. We become all about our children. And I'm not saying we shouldn't love and serve and be present with our children. But we are teaching them about uh, everything by the way that we treat ourselves. They're observing that. So as a mom and as a wife and as a woman, it's your responsibility to cultivate your life. And that includes asking for what you need. Okay, asking um, for help, asking for time, whatever, and finding what it is that I need. So when you do yesterday's, uh, you know, first step of asking a question, what do I need? Your next step is to cultivate that and make sure that you find a way to take action on that. And that may mean asking for a babysitter. That may be asking for, you know, time off uh, from work. That may be asking for something that can help you cultivate this life that you love and help yourself be well taken care of, okay? So um, this is just something that you need to get in the habit of doing and asking yourself, how can I cultivate my life today? What do I need to do to make myself happy? And this is on no one else's responsibility but yours. And it, what happens is when we start to put this responsibility on other people, they begin to feel pressure from us and they can't meet our needs. They can't meet it, make us happy. And everything becomes around them. And that's when, you know, relationships start to break down and suffer between your children and your loved ones. Um, you know, if you as a parent are putting so much of your happiness and connection on your children, now when you're, they're young, it's easier to get away with that. But as they get older, they are going to pull away and have their own lives and you're gonna be left feeling empty. Okay, so um, you need to start to cultivate a life that you love. That includes all the things I just mentioned, taking care of yourself on a daily basis, figuring out what you need to do to make yourself happy, pulling your energy back into yourself and figuring out what you need to do so that you have a life that you don't need a vacation from, okay? And this is on you. And this takes you out of victim mode of everything's happening to me and I'm just a victim of life and into creator mode of realizing I have a say, I have a choice of where I'm gonna spend my time, where I'm gonna place my mind, how I'm gonna do this, and this is on you, okay? This is on you as an individual. So, uh, when you're neglected, you can't expect to bloom. You can't expect to be radiant. You can't expect to, to look that way or feel that way inside. Now, it's really easy to connect with the physical components because us as women, right, we want to be physically beautiful. We want to feel radiant. But that starts with cultivating from the inside out. So, uh, hi, Tina. Good to see you. Hi, everybody who's watching. Uh, I love that you guys are here live. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about this. But I want you today to next question after you check in with yourself and say, what is it that, I, that you need? I want you to find a way to start to think about cultivating your life as a garden and not making anything, anyone else responsible for that but yourself. And what do you need to do to start cultivating that life? Whether that's you know joining a workout class, uh, investing in that way, joining a community, getting some coaching, um, you know, connecting with other people, having a girls' night, uh, all that stuff, uh, nourishing your body with good nutrients, doing the inner work so that the pain inside of you is not calling the shots anymore in your addictions. And I specialize in this, okay, and helping you work through this so that your hormones and your body can function properly. So, um, you know, it's your responsibility to take care of your body and be healthy when you are healthy physically. This affects so much of your emotions and your well-being. Literally, your brain, your gut, your liver, your adrenals. And this is, you know, part of what makes me special in the way that I coach is I'm going to give you both, okay? I'm going to give you the work that we need to do on the gut, the liver, the adrenals, the practical components of your brain chemistry and your gut communication and your pituitary gland, your hypothalamus, all those things that need to be communicating properly so that your hormones can function. I'm also going to give you the inner work that's calling the shots on why you're self-sabotaging, why you're struggling with addiction, why you have this pain, why you're not able to show up in your life and feel uh, valuable enough to cultivate your life. And we're gonna go back and look at why and start to cultivate this relationship with yourself. Um, Tina says, it's scary to think of making new friends at this stage in life, like starting kindergarten again. Yeah, Tina, I understand that that's hard, um, you know, but it's something that we need, right, to cultivate, to be cultivated. It's one of those nutrients that we need is relationships with other people. So just like I spoke about yesterday, she takes action, right? She, she does what she needs despite what she feels. So again, you connect with yourself there, Tina, and you say, you know, I'm scared. I'm scared of what? rejection. I'm scared of maybe 
someone not liking me or not finding what I want in a friendship. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to feel into that. I'm going to have compassion for myself, and then I'm going to take action and actually, you know, pursue something and try to find some new relationships because I need that in order to bloom. Or else I'm putting all this pressure on my significant other, my children, whatever, to try to meet all these needs in me that they just possibly can't. Okay, so I encourage you to feel through that. Definitely connect with that part of yourself. Don't make yourself wrong for it. Have compassion on it. And then you're going to take action based on your need versus what your feeling is, okay? So thanks for sharing. I love that. I love the ability to be able to coach you right here live. So if anybody else has anything to add, um, I'm excited for you to really grab onto this. Yeah, exactly. Um, really grab onto this and really think about how to cultivate your life into a life that you love and what it is that is lacking for you. What's missing? Okay, what's missing? <clears throat> Hi, Sheree. Glad you're here. Yeah, what's missing in your life? Okay, what is the what is the component that's lacking? And what is it that you need to be able to bloom? Because it ha happens effortlessly when these things are in place. Okay, and that includes the inner work. So what do you need to do to take action on that? Uh, I have opportunities to reach out to me for a free call to connect with me so we can talk about how I can best serve you. I invite you to take advantage of that. There's a link on my Instagram page on the bio. You can book a call with me. And I would love to talk with you about what's coming up for you. Um, so thank you for tuning in for today, days two about Cultivate. And I hope that you can think of some ways that you can do this for yourself today and start to feel more radiant naturally because you're giving yourself what you need. All right, loves, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I have a really good one to share with you tomorrow. I kind of gave you a hint of it today, but I can't help it. It all just blends together because it's also important in, to your self-care, to making sure that you are um, creating a relationship with yourself. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.